Helen Fisher is an anthropologist and author of Why Him, Why Her? And you've just done this whole giant study on kissing, right? Well, I'm, yeah, even larger Ongoing. than kissing. But right. um, kissing is certainly part of the whole process, no yeah. question. What is the science of kiss kissing? Oh, we're beginning to find out what happens in the brain when you kiss somebody. And, in fact, I think it can trigger all three of the basic mating emotions, lust, uh, romantic love, mm -hmm. and deep feelings of attachment. But right. uh, uh, we know that there's uh, testosterone in saliva. And men like sloppier kisses, more open kisses with more uh, tongue action. Right. And we think that it's because they're trying to inject the testosterone <laughs> and also they're trying you know to what? that makes all kinds of sense yeah right and uh, I mean it's a prelude to whatever might happen eventually right of course well it's a it's very important prelude because over 50% of men and women who start liking somebody mm -hmm. um, will um, uh, stop liking them after the first kiss so it can be the kiss of death as opposed to the kiss wow. of life yeah um, we're watching that tape does that make sense that there would be such a thing as a kissing school? I think that people probably have a hard time um, telling other people what they want. And particularly with something like kissing, because kissing has so, I mean, the whole brain becomes involved in kissing, you know, mm -hmm. and it can really trigger, uh, you know, dopamine in the brain and give you a real rush, or it can really turn you off. So, so this it's whole love, and love it. at first sight thing is yeah. less probably accurate than the first kiss. I think they're both important. As a matter of fact, uh, if you fall in love with somebody at first sight, mm -hmm. um, the first kiss, even if it's bad, isn't going to make any difference. It the brain oh, is no already... It. Oh, it's already <laughs> jump started. Exactly. It's all already down the That's tracks. Right. And then you will start to hope, well, I uh -huh. can teach her to you know, do this or that, and then you go to the kissing school if it doesn't work. So somebody could theoretically improve their kissability? Oh, sure, absolutely. And there's good payoffs to that, too, because uh, <laughs> the better you kiss... How do you work on something <laughs> like that? Well, so far they've taken um, uh, kissers mm -hmm. into a... Um, into a uh, part of the student center, actually, at a mm -hmm. college, right. and ask them to start kissing and watch, and then take blood samples. So, and in fact, uh, men uh, who are uh, a long, in a long-term relationship, uh, um, uh, oxytocin levels will go up, and that's associated with deep sense of attachment. So you can trigger lust by giving the uh, testosterone, right. you can trigger attachment by driving up the oxytocin, right. and you can also trigger intense feelings of romantic love by driving up dopamine. Wow. Yeah. Who knew? I know. This is why we kiss a frog, because maybe we'll get a prince. Maybe something <laughs> will turn on. <laughs> that it makes happens. all the sense in the world, doesn't sure. it? Yeah. Because then if the, kid, does the frog kisses back, and it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Then he's no longer a frog. There you so go. So that's what you're looking for. <laughs> Helen, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Now here's...